we're going a little crazy here, guys. I'm supposed to be live, and I'm not, yet again. It's telling me that I'm live, but when I go to check if I'm live, I am not live. And so I'm not sure if I should start doing this for no reason. <laughs> I just don't even know what to do right now. This is taking me 40 minutes because Facebook will not behave tonight. And the thing is, I hear people talk about problems with Facebook all the time, and I never have problems with it. Never. So I don't understand what's happening. Oh my goodness, look, I'm actually live. All right, guys, I'm going to do it. <laughs> this is insane. I don't know why it's taken so long just to be able to get myself live here. And I would show you my face, but, like, I'm afraid to, like, stop sharing my screen and then not be able to share my screen again. <laughs> I don't even know, guys. I, I just don't want to mess it up. So I'm here. I'm live. It looks like it. All right. Here we go. We're going to do the presentation. Let's just hope that it all goes smoothly. Let's see. So how does this work then? Let's see. Okay. Can you hear the rain, guys, through the screen? Okay, there we go. I can do it like this. All right. I can't even believe it. What a night. So I, it took me the entire time that I planned on being live to get live. I just, um, beside myself a little bit. I spent five hours today on these slides. I've never done slides before. <laughs> so... I'm learning. There's that. What I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to take a moment and I'm just going to breathe. I'm going to light some Palo Santo. I'm going to take a couple deep breaths. Feel free to join me. This is the first of three of these presentations. None of them are meant to be more than 30, 35 minutes long from start to finish all together. But this is the first time I'm doing this live, so I can't promise that I'm going to be as quick as I will be once I get used to doing it. Okay. So, today is part one. Today I invite you to embark on a journey into the fascinating origins of the witch archetype. We will explore how this concept emerged from ancient pagan traditions and evolved. Evolved throughout history, leaving a lasting impact on our cultural and social landscape. Thank you for joining me. So tonight we'll delve into the mystical realms of Mesopotamia, Egypt, and Greece. second guys I'm gonna get an echo there we go okay okay here we go again 
Join me as we delve into the mystical realms of Mesopotamia, Egypt, and Greece and witness the transformation of the witch archetype during the medieval period in Europe. So the witch archetype has origins in ancient pagan traditions, in case anyone didn't know. The origins of the witch archetype can be traced back to ancient pagan traditions where witches held significant influence. In these early civilizations, witches revered, were revered as wise women, priestesses, and practitioners of magic. They were solely and closely connected to nature. They possessed healing abilities and acted as, any, and acted as intermediaries between the earthly and spiritual realms. The Witch Archetype, the historical history across time and culture. Okay, just making sure we're all still going smooth. Everything's still going smooth. I have like trauma from, from, <laughs> from trying to get on here. Okay, our first stop is Mesopotamia. Let's begin our exploration in Mesopotamia, where the concept of witches flourished. The region encompassing present-day Iraq and Syria was a hub of magical practices and beliefs. The ancient Mesopotamians revered skilled practitioners of magic known as Kachaputu, who held powerful positions in society. Moving forward, we encounter the influential role of, of witches in ancient Egypt. Here, the witch archetype was associated with the goddess Isis and her priestesses. These women possessed knowledge of herbalism, divination, and healing arts. They were respected for their ability to commune with the divine and assist in matters of health, fertility, and protection. Moving on to Greece, our journey takes us to ancient Greece, where witches were known as pharmacades or pharmacies. These individuals were skilled in herbal medicines and potions. Their abilities were seen as supernatural. Goddesses like Hecate presented powerful magic, <laughs> the power of magic and transmutation. And witches were revered for their connections to these divine figures. Witches across time, throughout the ancient pagan traditions, they served as intermediaries between the natural and the supernatural mm -hmm. realms. They possessed a deep understanding of the hidden forces of nature and the ability to harness them for various purposes. The reverence for witches in these cultures laid the foundation for the evolving perceptions and interpretations of the witch archetype in later civilizations. The influence in Mesopotamia, Egypt, and Greece, the, Egypt, the influence of the witches in those civilizations, were power, they, they were powerful figures, and so their unique abilities and knowledge shaped various aspects of those societies including the religions, the healing practices, and cultural beliefs. They played pivotal roles in religious ceremonies, um, in the pursuit of knowledge, and the well-being of their communities. Moving on to medieval Europe, you'll notice a theme. Our journey continues as we shift our focus to medieval Europe. This period marked a time of immense change and religious transformation, greatly impacting the perception and the treatment of witchcraft. 
the rise of Christianity and spread of religious doctrines led to demonization of witches and the widespread persecution of alleged practitioners. So moving on to Christianization and religious shifts. So the Christianization of Europe during the medieval era um, in Europe underwent a process of pegging beliefs and practices, um, including witchcraft, were increasingly viewed as heretical and condemned by the church. The association of witchcraft and with devil worship became prevalent, leading to a shift in societal perception. Next is witch hunts and persecution. The medieval era saw a rise of witch hunts and the intense persecution of individuals accused of witchcraft. The practices by categorizing them as witchcraft and actively persecuting those suspected of engaging in them. This led to a conflict between popular beliefs and the religious authorities with the latter attempting to assert their control and eliminate mm -hmm. what they perceived mm -hmm. as threats to their mm -hmm. religious hegemony. Mm -hmm. Despite the efforts of religious authorities, the practices of folk magic and traditional healing persisted in many communities. Local healers known as cunning folk and wise women continue to provide their services, offering remedies for physical ailments, charms for protection and guidance for various life situations. These individuals often had a deep understanding of the natural world, including properties of plants, stones, and other elements, which they utilized in their practices. Women in particular played a significant role in these traditions. Wise women were respected members of their communities, sought after for their wisdom, their healing abilities, and connection to the spiritual realm. They were often midwives, providing support during childbirth and caring for the well-being of mothers and infants. However, the association of these women with folk magic and healing practices also made them vulnerable to accusations of witchcraft. Tensions between popular beliefs and religious authorities eventually escalated into widespread witch trials and persecutions. From the 15th to the 17th centuries, Europe Waves of witch hunts, particularly targeting women. Accusations of practicing witchcraft were often based on stereotypes and prejudices, and the trials were characterized by unfair proceedings, coercion, and torture. The accused were subjected to interrogations and forced confessions, often under duress or through the use of brute force and torture methods. These confessions were used as evidence against them, leading to convictions, and in many cases, executions. The fear and paranoia surrounding witchcraft reached a fever pitch during this period, driven by superstitions, religious dogma, and societal anxieties. The impact of folk magic herbalism and traditional healing practices on the witch archetype and popular culture can really not be overstated. Despite the efforts to suppress these practices, they continue to persist in various forms and became embedded in folklore and in cultural traditions. The image of the witch as a practitioner of magic, particularly of herbalism, and a source of wisdom and healing, has endured through the centuries. Folklore, literature, and artistic representations have portrayed witches as powerful figures, 
often marginalized or misunderstood by society. This legacy continues to shape our perception of witches as complex characters, but both passive and negative attributes, both positive and negative attributes. They were also, they were good and they were bad. There were, there were bad and good things that were identified um, in these women. So in the Middle Ages, there was a revival of witches are women as practitioners of herbalism and being powerful figures um, that were respected in their society. In recent years, today, current times, there's been a revival of interest in folk magic and in herbalism and alternative healing practices. Many people are reclaiming and celebrating these traditions as part of their cultural heritage and exploring their spiritual and healing aspects. This resurgence does, uh, reflects a desire to reconnect with nature, to reclaim ancestral knowledge, and challenge the historical suppression of these practices. And it makes sense. It makes sense why we are disconnected from nature, and we feel that. We do not live in a society that is sustainable for human um, thriving, for humans thriving. <clears throat> the persecutions of those accused of witchcraft had a devastating impact on individuals, families, and communities throughout history. Countless lives were lost through trials, burnings at the stake, and other forms of execution. The witch hunts not only caused immediate harm, but also instilled fear and suspicion within societies, fostering a culture of paranoia and, dis and distrust. And you still see that today. You still see that today when the occasional person, you know, it's not even occasional, not, not in this part of the world. I don't know about everywhere else, but in this part of the world, it's not even uncommon to have someone attack you and tell you that you're the devil because you own tarot cards or something like that. It's not uncommon. I mean, I feel like it should be, but it's just not. It's, it's actually all too common. The image of the witch as a practitioner of magic, herbalism, wisdom, reflects this desire to reconnect with nature. It reflects, it reflects this desire that there always was a desire and a, and a, for a connection with nature. It reflects that humans today are yearning to, get, to be close to nature once again. However, it is important to note that the witch trials were not solely driven by religious no motives. I know that we like to blame the Christians. And at the time, they were at fault. But... <laughs> Other factors, such as societal, economic, and political dynamics, did play a role in fueling persecutions. So, in some cases, individuals were accused of witchcraft as a means to settle personal vendettas or to. Oops. Sorry, guys, I got lost there. <laughs> Personal vendettas, yes. Um, or targeting mar marginalized groups, um, such as widows, um, elderly women, and people that just didn't conform to societal norms, people that didn't look like everyone else, people that behave differently than others. So this would be neurodivergent people. Anyone who wasn't normal including men. 
There were also some men hung, burned, even here in the United States, which was the later witch, witch trials. There were men put to death for witchcraft. As the Age of Enlightenment dawned in the 18th century, beliefs in witchcraft began to wane, and the persecution gladly subsided. Scientific advancements, rational thinking, and a more critical approach to understanding the natural world kind of led to the dismissal of many superstitions and supernatural explanations. Eventually, the witch hunts came to be seen as a dark chapter in history, reflecting the dangers of mass hysteria and the abuse of power. Yeah, people don't forget for long, though. Don't remember for long, though. They forget easily. So, despite the decline in the witch trials, the witch archetype did continue to captivate the public imagination. In literature, witches became prominent figures, often portrayed as, power, as powerful and enigmatic characters. The noble example, one noble example is Shakespeare's Macbeth, which features three witches who prophesy the tragic events that unfold. Throughout the 19th and the 20th centuries, with the rise of neo-paganism and feminist movements, the image of the witch underwent a transformation. Witches were reinterpreted as symbols of female empowerment, rebellion against societal norms, and connection to nature and the divine feminine. The concept of the witch became intertwined with notions of feminism, environmentalism, and alternative spirituality. A little behind on my on my slides. I'm proud of my slides there. Don't they look great? <laughs> I'm proud of myself. Uh, it's the first time I've ever done slides. It took me forever. Where was I? Okay. <laughs> Today. Today, witches are often celebrated as symbols of empowerment, of independence, and the, the reclamation of ancestral knowledge. Many individuals identify as modern witches and engage in practices such as Wicca, modern paganism, and eclectic forms of witchcraft. As we know, these practices, they draw inspiration from historical traditions, but they also incorporate temp contemporary beliefs and values. In pop culture, witches continue to be prevalent and multifaceted archetype. They appear in various forms, from the wicked witches of fairy tales to the rise to the wise and benevolent witches in fantasy novels and movies. The witch archetype serves as a reflection of society's fascination with magic, the supernatural, and the exploration of hidden realms of power and knowledge. Needless to say, the historical per, per, uh, persecutions of people accused of witchcraft have left a lasting impact on our cultural imagination. The witch archetype has evolved over time, reflecting societal attitudes and values. Today, the legacy of witchcraft survives the practice in the practices of modern witches and the ongoing exploration of magic herbalism and alternative spirituality that is not the end but i didn't want to make this a really long boring drawn out um educational talk i wanted this to be shorter 
and and easier and and I wanted to do it in three parts so that it wasn't so much at once so tomorrow I'll be back and we'll explore more about how witches have been used as are now used as symbols of rebellion and female empowerment and how over time and in numerous cultures they've emerged as figures of resistance challenging societal norms and empowering women to fate in the face of oppression and this is why this is why I feel it's time to wake the witches and this is why I created awaken her magic there is a deep deep feeling in my being that I feel like a lot of women are feeling right now where women are kind of waking up a remembrance it's not really learning anything new it's not really becoming aware of things it's more of a remembering a remembering of a time where we were allowed to be whole now granted we have more freedom than we ever had well at least in the last 2,000 years but throughout history, women faced limitations and restrictions on their autonomy, particularly in patriarchal societies like this one. Although this is the best of them, the witch archetype with her association with magic, intuition, and connection to nature offers a way for women to reclaim their power and assert their agency. And by readopting and embracing this witch archetype, women are able to challenge societal expectations and step into roles that were traditionally denied to them. It's time to bring the divine feminine back to the laws of the land.